All right, thank you. Welcome everybody to the March 18th Rec Commission, uh, March 18th, 2024 Rec Commission. I know we uh, had to move this date around. Thanks everybody for your patience. My schedule has been kind of nuts. Um, Ray was was hounding Gene and I uh, incessantly and it just had to get around to getting the date. <clears throat> so anyway, so happy to see everybody. Um, we've got the agenda was sent out by Ray and then uh, Matt actually forwarded the meeting minutes back in January. So um, uh, let me find my agenda. So we're going to start with the approval. So those are the minutes from January 18th. Um, does um, anybody have uh, any comments for Matt on the on the meeting minutes? Nope. All right, then can I just get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. All right, and a second. Second it. All right, second. All all in favor? I, I guess I can't raise my hand. Aye. Aye. <laughs> all right, I think, Gene, you're good. All right, so five, five, nothing, minutes pass. All right, um, next up, uh, public comment. Is there anybody in attendance from the public? We do not have anybody in attendance right now. Okay. Well, then we can move into the planned um, agenda. So we've got four items. Uh, Ray's got three of them. Amy has one. Um, I guess we'll keep it. Uh, I'm sorry, Ray, were you saying that Amy was at? Amy's not that? here yet. Okay, we'll just, so we'll just look for her. And meanwhile, we'll, we'll go through yours. Uh, I will keep an so. eye. As a matter of fact, let me just make sure that she has the invite. If not, she may be coming in as me also. Oh, you know what? Right. What if Jeremy can't get in because I'm in? Oh, yeah. I, I sent him a link, but it may have been my links. Oh, no, because Jean is here and she had answers. Jean on mine. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, yeah, no, Jeremy did. Let me, everybody just maybe check their email and see if he sent anything, because he did say that he was going to be able to make it. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't see anything in my email from him though. Um, so all right, let's uh let's just move onward and upward here. So Ray, the floor is yours. I'm gonna actually go ahead and turn the video off for a second so I can wolf down some food, but um yeah, I'm looking for the shared screen for the fitness campaign. Oh, you know what? I believe yes. <clears throat> So I shared with you all going in the, the the national fitness campaign a couple of attachments uh, around the sport court, and I believe that Matt may be the only one here that was with us when we first looked at this, uh, when we first introduced this to the commission, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, what it is. I'm going to share the screen, not that I have it, uh, share screen. So what it is, is a, it's a national campaign. It's a, it's an outstanding opportunity that we have been presented with. We were presented with a couple of years ago to look at creating funding for an outdoor sport court. That court is basically a, a, a it's a it's a locked in training cycle. Uh, it's it's like an outdoor room with workout equipment, with stations, uh, station stationary workout equipment that is there for drop in uh, fitness activity, drop in uh, use for community use. We were trying to find basically a three step process to uh, introducing that to the town of Amherst. The first one was in sort of uh, presenting it as an opportunity to to, to uh, engage Amherst wellness, to engage the wellness of the community, to engage public health. It, it meets a lot of different types of people and their interests in working out. It's, uh, you know, it certainly is, is, uh, you know, it speaks to the interest in public health. The, the heavy part was then to move into the site selection. 
um, myself and some members of town hall started to think critically about where the best place to put it would be. We thought about when it was in the beginning stages, I don't want to say beginning stages, beginning stages of my, my, uh, uh, introduction to the track project over the high school, we started thinking about using it as a as a way of bringing people in a central space downtown that was going to be uh, uh, accessible by by the uh, by by the downtown community by by young adults by older adults and it, it would the central location of the high school and certainly with the energy of, around that transformation of the high school. Uh, it made sense to try and do it there because it also would be able to be moved into that that uh, reimagining of the of the uh, uh, war memorial space over at the over at community field. Uh, the as we are looking at trying to transform the war memorial pool and the pool house there. Uh, we started thinking about ways to use this as a convenient uh, attraction in that in that transition process. We looked at some other sites there also, but that step two was the there was an active space to try and find a place that was visible, that had heavy traffic, that had a connection to uh, you know people by car, by trail, by by uh, by walking paths. We, we wanted to try and find a space that made sense. We have settled on, um, uh, I guess I can stop and, and ask if there are any questions about the, the those first couple stages there. Yeah, I think the motivation for this was, I think, because we were going to likely get a grant to really help support it. Step three of the three-step process was to try and find the grants that would that would support this. And the reason why it came back to us is because Angela Mills was has been in constant uh, has been in relatively constant contact with uh, the with the National Fitness Campaign and the folks that we entered into the conversation with in the beginning. And we have continually been applying for for grants that would help make that work. And we found a pretty uh, a, a pretty favorable opportunity that we are that we're looking at trying to jump in on now. The reason why I bring it to you all in the commission is because citing it on the on the property over community field, War Memorial in that area, uh, citing it on town property, we need to basically ask the commission to vote for approval of that process. Um, and so, in order to move forward with the grants. In order to move forward in that grant process, we're looking for uh, rec commission approval. So, so real quick, Ray. Um, yes. I'll start here. Just so there is a a potential like this is coming back now because Angela has found that there there a grant that might accommodate us. We got stalled from what I believe that uh, um, I. I'm on a public meeting here, so I should probably be careful about don't quote me. But uh, the the main reasons why we why we got derailed before, why it got tabled before, was because of the timing with the transformation over at the field. It wasn't we weren't yet underway in the process with War Memorial and those transformations. The track project had taken some of that also, but the other reason was for funding and and to try and get ourselves locked into the grant it's going to be partially grant funded it's going to be partially uh private sponsorship we're going to try and find some private donations that we're going to they're going to help us there uh because the the opportunity for the grant has re-emerged here because we now have the timing and the opportunity to jump in. We think that uh, uh, the the grant looks favorable here right now. There was the issue about do we want to try and put, there was the matching the offer, there was a, there was a $20,000 for a slab and a $25,000 installation. We, we wound up seeing a ticket that was going up and up and we had not yet secured the grant funding. We're in the process of trying to trying to secure that now. And we think that the we're hopeful that that would fully fund this project. Or I don't the, have that. It's a I, don't, I can't tool. tell you fully funding. I can tell you that the that the piece that we were looking for was was uh, was covered in the grant. Um, 
what I can tell you is this, if we, uh, if we were to, I, I'll continue answering any questions that may, that I may be able to answer here today, but if we were to, if we were to, uh, uh, put forward to a vote, the, uh, the opportunity to pursue in the spaces that, that, that have been targeted as possibilities, the, if we were to give uh, consent, give commission consent to apply for grants to make this work, I think that would be the 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 the, uh, the information that the commission would need to give to Town Hall. Right, and I've got so one more question, but does yes. um, Jonas? Why should, I'm sorry, Jonas Jean, did you have one before? I have a question after you, Andy. It's fine. I'm good. Uh, I, I was just wondering about the in, in engagement part, like how to get people interested in, in into this area. This, you know, you talk about that as the first step in the process. Like, has that been done, or like? Uh, it it hasn't. It? The first the first step will be I scroll down to some of the some of the uh, 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 sort of advertising pieces of it. The, the first step of of trying to attach into public wellness and public, uh, I think that would have to go simultaneously. I think that's something that we would have to push simultaneously as we're trying to look to to uh, uh, to cite the the fitness center, to cite the the sport court here. Um, we would like to be able to build up the interest in it. Uh, uh, you know the the community access about trying to build a community about trying to make a make a, a, a you know, to provide public fitness as a way of building community. I think that's that is a, a central piece. Um, but no, we don't have to do that, and and we don't have to do that and get people to say yay if we're applying for the grants. I think part of that was two years ago trying to convince. Uh, town planners to bring to the commission as I did to bring bring to the commission the opportunity to bring the idea and to make sure that people understood that this was a a, a possibility for uh, for Amherst. Uh, Jonas, yeah, so I'm going obviously coming to this uh, late because it sounds like a lot of groundwork was built. Um, this doesn't crowd out or kind of uh, remove the possibility of other. Um, because I, I'll just give you my kind of personal opinion. I don't know if it's, it's warranted here, but, um, and I, maybe I'm not the one to speak because I don't go into for like program, like for fitness, um, mm -hmm. programming like this. I think I'm just, I just run or I bike and I'm just wondering, um, and I've seen a lot of these kind of structures. This is, I think, a way slicker, um, um, example of but you see those kind of like um passive structures and parks with like you know pull-up bars and and my experience is that they're not being used and i just wonder if in and this is even in like very warm climates mm -hmm. and so i imagine this would not be obviously very practical yeah. in the winter and these these look great and you know the marketing looks great and i'm just playing devil's advocate here and wondering I guess kind of Gene already spoke to it. Is there a, um, you know, uh, a demand for this? And then, if you build it, will it will they come? Yeah, and then I guess like you, obviously it's different. Than, it's a different proposition to pickleball, but it's it it seems to me as a shame that and pickleball as a whole, they're an animal and the noise, but that's like something that people, I think, would really use, and it'd be a shame if we built this and then it didn't get used. So. Yeah, Ray, any thoughts on that before I go to Chris? Um, I believe I believe that the the sport courts are uh, relatively popular when they get installed. I don't know. I I can't speak to the long term use there. I, I, I if you're suggesting that we that we assure ourselves before investing that money that there is that interest. That speaks to Gene's question. If you're if you're suggesting that we do assure ourselves that there is that public interest, that sustainable public interest in a college area, uh, in a college area with a pretty strong sense of outdoor uh, activity, 
um, then I can certainly bring that to our team, our our team downtown. If I could just quickly follow up and kind of maybe contradict myself a little bit. I'm wondering maybe if if there is like actually scheduled like maybe yoga and it's encouraged, then I could see it maybe really getting traction um, versus mm -hmm. just it's this thing that's sitting there and, you know, so that's that, that could be was useful. That was one of the reasons to respond to that. That was one of the reasons why the school was particularly used because there was some sense of of um, our ability to attach it to the high school and to give high school access, basically be like like a, a rec space that the schools use for school programming, for health and wellness courses over there. Um, it would be something that potentially because of its proximity to the senior center, the senior center could also use. Um, uh, we could you know, certainly rec, I can speak for rec directly that we could do yoga classes there. We could do fitness classes there. We could do some uh, training courses there that don't involve us using school space um, to, to, to engage. Um, that, that puts it on there are, there is, there is yeah. a utility there that involves class and programming much like uh, I viewed it somewhat like like you, know, you mentioned pickleball or basketball courts or tennis courts. I view it as sort of a a, uh, a, a, a specific but versatile and specific uh, a public space where you can where you can have people drop in and show up, but then you can also use that space to schedule you know small events or training events or classes or what have you it's not just a drop in the middle of the field and say i hope people come and use it but we can actually engage that and make that make that possible um that's right just real quick i'm seeing on your screen you are in a practice session is that your screen or my screen and are we actually live uh oh no are we not in i, I thought i heard the announcement that we were but I just no, I heard the uh, announcement that we were recording. It's just been saying that for my screen the whole time. Okay, so I okay. did just hit that. I'm not sure. I'm, it says webinar has started. Um, I don't know if it, it was broadcast. It says recording at the top left. It, yeah, it has been, been recording, recording the whole time. Okay. It has definitely been recording the whole time, but I don't know if that webinar was. I don't know what that means. Then. Okay. All right, sorry to, sorry to derail. So, Jonas, that, um, how does that sound? That sheds a whole new light on it. I mean, it puts it in a whole different light. So, um, especially the, the high school aspect of it. And that sounds wonderful. Um, yeah, I, the proximity. So while I good. am doing that, I'm also, I do want to just announce before we get to Chris's question, uh, I do have, uh, I'm elevating them right now to the panel. I have, uh, uh, Amy Ruzecki and Dave Zelmeck are here. Dave was particularly involved in the siting of the sport court. I'm looking to see if that has worked yet. Uh, Dave, Amy, are you in? No, not yet. No, all you did was allow me to unmute. Okay, so I just, and I saw that I changed you to a panelist. I'm gonna try that again. So I think I made you, I allowed you to speak. Are you a panelist now? It looks like you are. Yes. And Dave Selmek is here also. So I'm promoted both of them to panel. Uh, Dave, are you here? Uh, can you hear me, Ray? I can hear you, Dave. Okay, and so I did see them. I have them up here as the attendees. Uh, Amy's coming in for the next state for the next step, anyways. Um, but we are in the middle right now. I don't know if you were with us for that part of the presentation. But I introduced the sport court. I reintroduced the sport court to the commission, of which one of the members here was here when we introduced it a year and a half ago. But uh, I did introduce the the the, the process the siting plan and also uh, encourage them to be able to move to vote and affirm the, the town's uh, pursuit of this grant to make that work. Um, I would, 
I will. Yeah, uh, while we while we go to Chris, he says it's been for a while, and I wonder actually even maybe Chris, Matt, if if we all just sort of comment, and then Amy and Dave, maybe you could just uh, provide some reaction to to all those comments. Chris, um, mine, mine was a question. Mine was a question because on the last meeting, I think we discussed that redoing of the pool house with some funds. Is that kind of like two projects go together, or are you moving the pool house, or? Conveniently, that is the next thing that we are going to be talking about. Amy is here to give us an update on the War Memorial pool. Okay. Then I, my my question can we're good. Yep. All right. We'll, we'll hold that. Then yep. uh, Matt. In the fitness court materials, there's two models. There's the the one with just the workout area, and then there's the one fitness court studio, which has the the group area, as you can see on Ray's screen. So are you proposing the group one, the one that in, the fitness court studio that inclu includes the group area? Uh, I believe it includes both. It, the, the size of it is roughly, uh, Dave, do you know, um, uh, the space that we're <laughs> looking at right now is, I don't think it's as I don't think I think that's a, a fraction of the space that is laid out on the sport court. Yeah, I could I could jump in here, Ray. I didn't hear the beginning of the meeting. I'm actually kind of doing du double duty. Um, I'm I'm, I'm going to be at the town council meeting in a little bit, but yes. um, you know, I I think you know Angela Mills in the town manager's office uh, has been you know instrumental in keeping this alive as well. Working with Ray, working with myself. Um, I think the idea is, you know, to seek to seek as much funding as possible to try to keep this idea alive. As Ray has probably told you, there's some grant funding available. Amy is going to tell us more about the work to uh, vision uh, a new pool house and the area around the pool house, including the War Memorial area and that area. So um, we, we haven't locked in a site for the sport court. The idea is perhaps it could go near the War Memorial Pool, but I think the idea is that that work is ongoing right now and Amy's gonna give us an update. I understand there's been some good progress there, but again, um, you know, we're kind of, we're planning for the future. I, I think the sport court is some sometime in the future. This is not gonna happen during 24. We're lo really looking at probably 25, 26 to install this. So we have a little time to figure that out. And whether it's around the area of War Memorial, I think that is yet to be determined, but it seems like a good idea with with um, support from a lot of people. Compared with the commission, the, uh, the, the, the tentative target sites that was shared with us and coming back and those were cited around the War Memorial, it is, I, Thank you, David. That, that's not. It's not to say that those are the those are the sites that we have to choose from. It's not. Doesn't have to be one of those three places. Those were the three that we were moving towards when we last sat down as a group and really, really worked on it. But a lot of that does depend on those other projects that are going on here and around the town. Right. So I, I think we have a couple of questions here. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, it's just the so the grant that we're we we have our eye on is it specific to this project? Or is this is that grant money that could go elsewhere? Uh, Ray, do you want, are, are you talking about the grant money for the sport court? Yes. No. Yeah, I'm trying to understand sort of the funding mechanism and, and basically like is is it sort of grant money for this specific project? In which case, hey, that sounds great. If it's if it's grant money towards anything, you know, that's related to fitness. Yeah, I don't really know much about this program. I don't know like Yeah, Ray 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 could speak uh okay. to the details or bring those back to you, but the funding that is available through private sources and through um the company that makes these is actually specific to this. Okay. To this product. It's not a choice of doing a basketball court or a sport court. Okay. Um and I know there's also a shortfall you know, we don't have all the funding, even if we get the grants, we don't have all the funding. And and again, Ray may know those numbers better than I do. Okay. So them right now. Yeah, I mean, I'd be curious, and maybe while you're looking, the, the things that sort of pop in my mind, other things that pop in my mind, 
and I don't want to derail because if this is a, a, an opportunity to add an asset, that's great. But like, do we have a target audience? Has anyone, like, has anyone ever been to one of these installations? The map shows like they're all over the place. Have, has anyone seen one or has anybody talked to a community that has one to see whether it's actually being used? Because, you know, we talk, you know, the school, lots of synergies, but maybe the school won't use it at all. Or, you know, are there some other, again, based on other people have used this program, does it resonate certain well with a certain group or not, which could help with uh, with some citing ideas. But I just, I'm not sure what other research has been done on on this group and this initiative. So, you know, anybody who can share stuff, I'd, I'd love to hear. I'll say, first of all, anecdotally, I've seen uh, at least some version of this uh, down in Tampa, Florida, and it was used. It was, it was a, it was cited at a, at a at an open park down there, I've seen, I've seen this type of court uh, situated and used. Um, I don't know that that doesn't necessarily say anything about what it means right here. I haven't, I, I haven't done that research here in terms of what sort of demand is on the space here. I think the question about if we build it, will they come? I think that's a reasonable question for us to be asking here. Um, yeah, worst case wanted... scenarios we build, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, oh. but worst case scenarios we build it in a in a spot that's kind of fundamental to some to some larger things we're trying to do, and it then then it sits unused. Um the the other thing that I wanted to add in here as I'm looking through some of my information right now is that we are we are seeking some of that uh, in terms of uh, uh, funding this we are looking for uh, strategic uh, 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 cooperation from from uh, Amherst College was not in the was not in the conversation with us at the very beginning when we talked about this a, a year and a half ago uh, you know when we started looking at this a couple of years ago we are looking to try and get community partners to come aboard with us the colleges are particularly uh, uh, are particularly interesting for us as potential funding sources um but we are basically the the fifty thousand uh, dollar grant that we were looking for before is now is now uh it's it's rolled over and we're we're trying to put that to use and match it with this out, outside funding with with private and sponsored funding Uh, Andy, I see Matt's hand is up. I'm Andy's, assuming... Andy's on mute. Andy, you're on mute. Matt, would you like to uh, jump in? Yeah. Um, Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm just wondering, to, I'd like to hear from Amy because so far I'm struggling with like what question you're even asking. I, I just need some more specifics about which model of fitness court like where where does it fit into the war memorial pool um what sort of funding structure because right now there's i i don't even know what question you're asking maybe amy can give more detail amy probably will not yeah i, I mean what i can offer i don't know i i mean frankly i think i heard first about this proposal like a week ago um so oh. <laughs> Um, so unfortunately, I haven't been part, and I don't think DPW really has been part of the conversation on this. Um, I, I'll say anecdotally, like, I think something like this sounds really cool, right? Um, but it is all about the siting. Um, part of, you know, what I'm here to talk about specifically on the next item is that we're just now kind of embarking on that kind of redesign of how to use the War Memorial Pool area. And so I think to buy this with the specific purpose of putting it at War Memorial Pool in that area, that'd be putting the cart before the horse in a way, because we haven't even started to have the conversations about what the best uses of the sites are. Um, and so I, I guess that's, that's the only thing I would recommend about this right now is just, you know, it might, it might be worth it to be open-minded about the siting of it. Um, is, I can, is, is the grant contingent on having a site selected? The, no, it is not. Um, I, I can, I, and 
hearing Matt's question, I think what I'm asking for here is simply uh, uh, because we're looking at the the opportunity to drop this sport court into the design, which Amy's here to speak about the design for War Memorial. If we're going to include this in that design project and take something that's outside of the original, uh, the, the original planning for War Memorial, if we're going to take something like this and put that in to the, 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 the thought process for the War Memorial space, the pool area, you know, uh, the question is: Would the rec commission support uh, support uh, uh, our our looking at this sport court as part of that design process? And that's actually with Amy here. That actually is something that she can take back to the to the uh, uh, project designers that she can bring back to them if the commission supports our our wanting to involve this sport court as a as an idea as a concept can we can we look to try and include this this uh this push as part of that of that uh, uh design project and so i think what what uh town hall is looking for is they're looking for a uh, rec commission support to you to, to 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 have the sport court in mind as they build the plans for war memorial uh, <clears throat> matt did you have any follow-up on that uh well if it's just a question of whether this would should be considered as an option in the planning then i think the obvious answer to that for me is yes, because I thought the whole point of the War Memorial visioning was to was to explore a lot of different options. But at this point, I'm not ready to say it should be included. But I, I'm I, I, uh, because because it's it's a little to me that's a little bit cut before the horse. But yes, it should be considered as an option. Dave, do you want to jump in? I know you're double duty here. Yeah, thanks. You know, I, I've been listening um, carefully and and I think, I, I again, I didn't hear the beginning of this meeting or this conversation, but I, I think that's all we're, we're really looking for. Staff is really looking forward to, or excuse me, looking for, um, you know, your, your um, kind of enthusiasm for including this as part of the discussion around the War Memorial Pool in that area but also just general enthusiasm for the idea. We are keeping the grant opportunity alive. We've submitted a grant. We have no idea whether we're gonna get it. Um, there are private funds that, as Ray said, may be available and there are private funds from, from uh, various other sources. So, and again, you know, we're a couple of years off in both the planning for the War Memorial area, as well as this grant. So it's really just, your interest in us exploring this idea, would it fit in the master plan, conceptual plan around the, the pool and, and new bathhouse? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't, then we may look at other recreation areas in town. And I think I've heard a couple of really good questions from Matt and others, um, you know, getting input from, and I'm not sure if Ray has yet, but Victoria Shaw and and some of the coaches at uh, Amherst High School and Amherst Middle School, um, you know, getting input from various uh, 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 sports organizations like Amherst Baseball slash Softball, would they use it for training or, you know, stretching, you know, whatever exercise uh, as part of their their uh, program? So that's I think that's all we're looking for at this point. Is it, is this even a motion then? I mean, this is kind of a non-binding thing. Is this just okay to just say, hey, we, you know, we support you continuing to research new ways to be able to use that space? Because I, I would also be fine saying that. I, I guess as, not really... as far as I'm concerned, I don't I don't think it needs to be a formal motion, Ray. I don't right. want to okay. contradict where you no. are. I, again, I missed early discussion here. I don't I I don't think we need to have a formal motion for for uh, for action. I, 
I'm looking over this right now, and I think it is more of a of a uh, taking the temperature of the commission here than it is the actual authority because it isn't the site isn't founded. If you all said, ah, leave it out of the pool, we don't want uh, we want the pool to be, you know, we're we're in a different direction in the pool, and we don't want it. Then I think that we would just be looking at trying to find trying to site it in another space, anyways. And so that piece of it, I don't think we're at that stage yet. So um, let me ask you all if the if the court looks like something that you would want to uh, yeah. support as an idea, as a as a possibility in that space. Just can I ask one question first, though, is the, the questionnaire that went out to the public, was there kind of anything that you heard back that suggested that there is a need for this? Um, not directly. There is, there, there were, there was some feedback on our department survey. There definitely was some feedback about, about, uh, uh, uh outdoor recreation, outdoor fitness, outdoor recreation, but not specifically geared towards, uh, sport court. Okay. All right, Jonas, do you want to, uh, let's do last questions here and then just give oh. a thumbs up or thumbs down. I think Chris had a question too. Um, so other sites are not really on the table right now. So, cause one of the things that seemed like the brochure said, even though uh, Ray, you mentioned there wouldn't be any requirement for us to tell them where we're going to put it before we get funding. It seems like one of the requirements was foot traffic, um, general, you know, it's going to be a busy area. And to me, I have I vacillated between, you know, you mentioned, okay, the high school might use it. And I'm thinking typical high schoolers, I don't see them out there unless it's an organized gym class. Um, I just, to me, I don't see it being used a lot. And it seems to me, it doesn't feel Amherst to me. Um, I, I don't know, but I'm not obviously, so if that's my temperature, I'm not going to prevent obviously if, us from considering it so thank you Jonas. that's, that's just one person's one amorous person's thank you yeah. Jonas. that is helpful for yeah. me chris do you is that a legacy hand or are you no nah, it's a lazy hand i can't get i can't get my picture up and i can't get my hand down all so, right thank you all right uh jean why don't you go and then let's we'll go around the horn okay <clears throat> just a i'll say connor what jonas said but when i think if it is there people will use it i mean i know the kids they go they pick up they play soccer over at amherst college they go they place pick up soccer and you know other things that in other fields and other areas so i i i think that it would be used honestly um and it if it's not there they're not going to use it obviously but if it is there i think <laughs> there's much more of a possibility i think that they would be it, they would be creative I, I do think it would be used all right I believe it's typically much more of an adult use as much than it is a uh, casual drop in uh, uh, teenagers. Um, but uh, uh, I don't, I haven't done that demographic research. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, for the, in the spirit of moving things along here, um, I guess folks in favor of, continuing to research this um uh, just give me a verbal yes yes Jean? sorry all right we got matt yes i think yes. chris you said yes yes jonas half nap all right and i'll say yes so we got you got you got some direction ray very useful thank you okay amy you are up next Hi guys, nice to see you guys again. Um, yeah, so I, I thank you, Ray, for having me on the agenda. Um, you guys, I as you guys know, I'm going to say some stuff that you guys already know, but you know, we are working, you know, starting to work through the process of the War Memorial um, pool house area um, and kind of redesigning that whole thing. Um, the big focus of that is the bathhouse, but also understanding the needs around it that informs, you know, what we need for a bathhouse and that sort of thing. 
Um, so we're starting in on that process. Um, partly why I asked to be on the agenda is, you know, I've, I've heard that it makes a stronger park application if you can show that you're on public meetings and you're taking public comments and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to be kind of a standing, you know, update you guys in all of your meetings um, to keep you guys informed, but also to give a venue uh, for the public. We will also have, right now we're kind of the, um, we have a design engineer on board. Um, they've done the survey and they're just kind of reviewing all the existing information. So the Weston and Sampson study, um, kind of all the existing documents and putting that in to just kind of understand all of the past. They're just finishing that up now. Um, and we're now entering the phase where we're going to be having some public meetings. So we've got a meeting with uh, internal staff to try and just understand what we think we want for, you know, needs or potential uses around the bathhouse and, you know, having that inform, you know, the bathhouse, but also kind of conceptually the area. And then we'll be looking to also have public meetings with members of the, the public, like you guys, um, to have that conversation as well. So that's kind of where we're at in the process, but I'm I'm happy to take any input or questions or um, conversation on the project in general. Thanks, Amy. Matt? You're on mute. I'm just wondering who you surveyed and who you're going to invite to the public meetings. Like, are you going to, for example, invite everyone who had a pool membership or something like that? Oh, so when I said we surveyed the area, I mean, that was like land survey, land survey <laughs> um, oh. that was completed. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's two different ways to think about that. So, um, yeah, so we did land survey. But when it comes to the public meetings, we'll want those to be public forums. And so that'll be something that's, you know, announced to the public. But I'll make sure that Ray um, certainly gets it out to all of you. But it would be, you know, anybody from the public that wants to come and give input on the area okay but i think i think it's one thing to just put it on the town website and that qualifies as being advertising but um actually getting people to hear about it and get excited about it and uh like you might have to actually in, invite people specifically that are interested understood um i mean certainly I will be hopeful that members of this commission will would be key people that come to that because you got, I mean, that's part of why you're on the commission is um, to have that. But if you have ideas of other users, you know, I heard you well, say, I just said, you know, users the members, of the pool. Um, yes. So that's I a think great users idea of for me to reach out to. Be, yeah. Um, but if you, I don't, if you have other and, ideas, certainly we'd love to hear that as well. Um, of like specific groups to reach out to, to try to get a good representative voice. We will be, uh, because throughout the summer, we have access to a lot of obviously users of the pools. It is our intention to try and streamline some of their voices into the process as they come to us this summer. So uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, for people who are there and want to be involved, we'll have, we'll have uh, direction for them to say, look, you know, the, we we have a vision here of this space becoming something different. Would you like to have some input? Some input yeah, I think that? having posters at both of the town pools about this process would be very helpful. That's I great. I agree. That's great. Yeah, I think go through the PGOs as well, probably too, to reach kind of school age audience through just three points of contact. Love okay. it. Any any other uh, feedback we can give you, Amy, or anything else you're looking uh, for? So, what is the sort of the timing of this process? So, um, we are hopeful to we're we're going through this. I'm, I'm trying to think how to put it. Basically, we want to set ourselves up so that we can apply for a park grant this year, and that grant goes in in early July. Um, and in order to submit for a park grant, you need to at least have kind of conceptual designs of the area. And so these meetings are gonna be over the next month or so um, that we have both an internal kind of staff key stakeholders meeting and then have the 
Um, and that's just going to be to kind of maybe whittle out a couple of the crazy ideas and and get us kind of focused on what we what think we think things, and then yeah. have um, the public forums as well. So um, those will be pretty soon. So then they can take it and use that to really develop the design before that kind of early February or early um, July date. Right. So, so that's, you would have to email last year's pool users because the pools won't right. be open. Yep. Maybe is this just for um, the bathhouse or is this a, like a bigger, bigger picture? It's, it's bigger picture. The, um, the, the more immediate focus is the bathhouse, but um it would be short-sighted to simply replace the bathhouse as is without thinking about the uses. And so we're at least going to have, you know, a conceptual design of what the other uses are. So we know how many fixtures we need to have, um, you know, how big the bath, you know, the bathhouse is or um, some of the stuff, like if we decide to have a spray pad or a wading pool added, um, those would be potential uses of the space, but that would mean we'd need to have kind of a filter room added to the bathhouse. So some of those things are going to impact like decisions on if we think some of those things are going to be there, that's going to impact the design of the bathhouse because we don't have room in the current filter room to support additional filtration for um, like say a splash pad or a, a wading pool there. So, um, yeah. so it's yeah, they're they're all kind of interconnected. Even if the bathhouse is kind of the the first thing that we're hoping to move forward, we have to kind of understand the rest of the potential or future needs. Matt, yeah, in terms of um, in terms of the needs, the, the the uses and needs aspect, I sort of see there's like two different directions we could go in. We could think of this as a sort of a recreational facility, uh, like. Uh, where, where people come to recreate and relax and have fun, or we can look at this as more of a fitness act location where people come to work out and uh, go through, do their workout. And I guess it's in the end of the day, it's some combination of those. Um, but my understanding probably not, maybe not accurately is a lot of people who are coming to the, who have been coming to the war memorial pool are there to do laps and work out but maybe I'm not accurate about that. And in that sense, the fitness court could like fit into that kind of a little better, maybe, if you think of it as a fitness facility. The, uh, 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 just to, to challenge a little bit of the impression of war, war is also used by our, it's, it's heavily used by our summer camps. There's a relationship between okay. the the, the kids that come to our summer camps in that pool also. So a lot of the sort of casual play that happens over there, uh, recreation, you know, they go over to recreate, our kids go over to use the space to, uh, they, they walk over there basically on field trips, getting ready to go in the pool. And after they're done at the pool, they come out and they play on the outside. One of the reasons why a redesign is so important over there is because you know, quite frankly, there's a bunch of equipment over there that's dangerous. There's a bunch of equipment over there that's outdated and dangerous. We'd like to make that a place where our camps and other people who do go there, one of the reasons why there's not that much recreation over there is because there's not much recreational opportunity there other than having space. Basketball court is run down. The the swing sets and the playground equipment are 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 in bad shape. And so, and so the that's why looking outside of that pool, as, as Amy said, it would be we, we'd be a little bit short sighted to just look at doing the pool house if we don't use this opportunity to transform the Western Samson plan was to transform that entire area and to rebuild. Um, and so you're right. That is that in terms of our uh, uh, between war and mill, mill has so much stuff around it that recreation feels much more natural there. Mill has stuff to go over and, and do while your kids swim or to or to do after your family goes to swim or to just hang out over. Mill has a lot of stuff over there that's attractive to 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 families, to kids that have you know young 
you know, you know, you know, adolescents that are that are trying to go and and just sort of hang out. There's a lot of stuff over there to to look at recreationally that war doesn't necessarily have. And so this process uh, of of reimagining the War Memorial Pool basically gives it an opportunity: sport court, basketball courts. Uh, tetherball, whatever, uh, finding something over there, finding a, a a menu of different opportunities for people to go over there and hang out, to work out, to do more stuff. But that's that's what that that process is all about. And yes, we need more voices in it. We need users' voices in it, uh, which we will certainly get ourselves to streamline. Yeah, I find it, if if I could just kind of add, add my two cents, I find it really interesting, Matt, that like you think of that as like a place that people would come to work out because in my mind, I've always kind of envisioned it as like, you've got the pool, but then beyond that, a lot of the people use that space when say their kid is playing soccer and they have the, you know, the trailing kid that they need to entertain for a few hours during a soccer game and they bring them over to play at a playground or you know, kind of do those other things. And so I, I I guess my point is, it's really interesting to hear different people's ideas and visions for those spaces, because we all kind of have these different pictures in our head, but it's important to hear all the different voices so we can make the right decision to really maximize that space. Um, there's a lot you can do, but really only so much you can do in that space. So it's really great to hear what we can do and, and what people's ideas are. All right. Um, I guess if no one else has any comments for Amy, thanks for the update. And, you know, we will always save a spot for you in the meeting here. Thanks, guys. All right. Take thanks, care. Amy. All right. Ray, it's back to you. OSRP. Okay. Um, for for the uh, a little bit of brevity's sake, I, we've we talked about that OSRP survey. You guys gave some really valuable feedback. I know that the uh, the OSRP committee was was grateful for the input that came from this and other uh, public forums for that for that survey. Um, the survey right now in its final form is up on Engage Amherst. Uh, share screen. Do my quick commercial for for where we are with it right now. Um, it is up. Uh, it is up right now on Engage Amherst, uh, and uh, uh, prominently here in the space, we're trying to get as many people to uh, participate in this open space rec recreation survey. Um, what we're looking for right now is to get some more eyes there. Uh, I was in the in the process of of participating leading up to the release of the survey uh i wasn't aware of how of how uh um, how immediately overlapping how how potentially um uh, how potentially annoying of an overlap it might be for us to do this right in the heels of our departmental survey because there is some there is some overlap in the sense of what people are being asked to put in for uh, we are going to be sending people, we we will be sending people through the schools uh, that aren't necessarily our folks. We're going to try and get more more eyes to this open space and recreation survey, uh, 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 doubling up on the same people who did our recreation survey is proven to be a little bit of a, of a minor speed bump for us. But we are still looking to try and uh, try and get more eyes on to engage Amherst and onto this open space recreation survey because that information does feed our our finalizing that that uh, that that updated open space recreation plan. Uh, you all remember what the survey was was looking at. Uh, the survey is I have the form here uh the you remember what the survey was looking at the final form is here on engage amherst if you want to take a look at it but it's certainly if you can if you can get any of your 
of of your general circles in this direction in terms of your your contact circles in terms of parents that you that you speak to in terms of in terms of kids that you that 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 you have access to in terms of uh, Amherst uh, Amherst um, interested you uh, 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 adults uh, you know, we're looking to try and get as many eyes over here and participation as we can. How, how much longer is the survey open for, Ray? Great question. Let me see if I have that. Dave, if you're still here and you know the answer, you can certainly answer. But I'm looking to try and find it, exactly how long we're on. Um, I don't see how long. I can get that. I can get that information you too. Yeah, I, believe, I believe if I remember right, we were we we're going to be going through the start of April. And that's I'm looking at the calendar now. So that gives us a couple of weeks. I think I think the uh the survey was going out through March. Okay. And so any traffic that you can get us to that site, we appreciate. Uh, uh it's uh, if nothing yeah. else, it's it's a useful thing to send people towards Engage. We want to try and get as many people eyes on Engage Amherst. If maybe they don't know that it exists or don't know what it what it is, then it may just be helpful to get people into a valuable community resource. Very so that good. is OSRP. All right. Any questions, uh, folks, on that? All right, ARPA. And ARPA. Um, so we made a pitch. Uh, the one thing I'll say about ARPA is that uh, for a couple years we've been uh, uh, we have been basically nurturing a two hundred thousand dollar grant from ARPA to try and enhance our recreation departments activities, particularly around the run issues of equity. We were given a $200,000 grant to, to, to basically improve our programming, improve our, our engagement, uh, particularly as it revolves around the interest of, of, uh, of, of uh, diverse populations and, and, uh, uh, people who maybe haven't used our services as much as we would like them to to try to try and extend and you know basically the outreach of the program uh, into the entire Amherst community. And so uh, in terms of building equity in our in our expanse and in, in our outreach, uh, that two hundred thousand dollar grant was first we first really tapped into it to use it last just just going into this school year to bring in the Monday morning I mean sorry the 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 the, the MMMP I said Monday morning it's not Monday uh, uh the MMMP the pre uh, uh, before school middle school uh, uh act active engagement with students seventh and eighth graders that that extend their days beforehand. We did this to try and to try and help the family center in a really strong pilot program that the schools uh, introduced. Becky came in and spoke to to the commission a couple months ago about this this process. We were we were happy to use our grant to provide busing for that ARPS program and then to bring in a facilitator that could then expand the scope of that of that uh, program and so a part of that funding was already invested into our relationship with the schools and ex and making a, a really really strong program even stronger and have more reach because we provided buses and expansive programming um, and so now, as that grant is, was set to expire, we were tasked with spending the rest of that money to spend the rest of that. Uh, essentially, we were trying to spend one hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars, one hundred thirty thousand, after a couple of other things with the with the grant. To basically, spend that money to continue that work in other spaces, um, and so. 
Becky Demling, who this is her life force and did an outstanding job of building a shopping list inside of that and looking at a bunch of different programs that we could use that money uh, to go to try and support. Um, so we came up with a, a series of, where are we? Uh, we came up with a series of different of different programs and 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 uh, that that we could spend some of that money on. One of them, and uh, this, uh, I'll have Becky come back to us for our next meeting to go over sort of where we are on some of the some of the in, intentions on these. But one of them is uh, a it's not a sister program of MMMP, but but it is in somewhat like a model. But we are trying to take. Uh, some of the same students, some of the students who are on the wait list of that, of that school program in MMMP, and we are going to take them for the for the for eight weeks in the spring, and we're doing a, a community workshop, a community building and identity workshop, with with students from the middle schools and the police department and Cress, and we're trying to build on some of those. It's we're we're moving out of the school department now and into other active um, parts of parts of the the kids uh, 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 moving through the town here it's building bridges through basketball and so that is bringing them in for the purpose of engaging them through what they do and also having them again following up on some of the some of the conversations we've started and some of the self-reflective, getting them ready to go to the high school, and more importantly, or as importantly, uh, uh, introducing them to some of the people in our community that we think uh, are going to be helpful for them, some of the relationships that we think are going to be helpful for them and and uh, you know becoming young adults inside of Amherst. Building bridges in basketball. Uh, we are going to extend again. We're going to spend some more time building MMMP, the Morning Movement and Mentoring Program. I just remembered the M's. The Morning Movement and Mentoring Program. We're doing more to try and to try and invest in that program for next year as some of the budgets shifts around for us. We are trying to get ourselves into a space where we can use that money to support the future of that program. Uh, uh, in places that are much more familiar to all of you all here, uh, we're we're trying to do to take our 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 goal of making sure that everybody in Amherst learns or knows how to swim. Uh, we are providing free access swimming in the summertime, uh, and uh, uh, so we're building a free swimming program for lessons for for a series of lessons and using. Some of that ARPA funds to to support that process of we get, we're going to do some outreach and try and make sure that people know that we're we're offering that for people who are who would otherwise qualify for a fee subsidy for our swim lessons. We're going to try and move them towards lessons where we can give them free access to the pools in the summertime. Free access plus at the end of that because it's not just about teaching. Uh, teaching swim lessons, we also are looking to try to try to get them to then use those skills. We're going to give them uh, basically punch cards to come in and use the use the pools after they've completed their swim lessons, their their swim course. Two weeks lessons condensed in plus plus access afterwards to go and basically uh, use the use the pools to play. Um, we have a pop up in the park. Uh, which I think is a fantastic idea, and this is uh, this is a large amount of Becky's energy on this. But but we're going to uh, you know, the question that came up heavily in our recreation survey is about engagement at the parks, about rec engagement at the parks, and in, in the space where people are using. We're we're uh, we accepted the challenge and the encouragement from our feedback there to to build a program where we're going to have a warehouse of games and crafts where we can go and meet uh, families at the parks, meet them at Groff, meet them at Mill, meet them at Kendrick, meet them in public spaces and engage kids, young kids, older kids, if, if we can, basically have, have a, um, you know, rec programming in the parks 
uh, um, essentially once or twice a week. Uh, we have to do that and between Becky and uh, uh, some staffing that we're getting through the through the uh, um, uh, through the funding also we're going to have some engagement with kids in that space. Uh, we talked about equity and and uh, the pools in particular. We're using some of that money to to uh, move our pools into full compliance, where we've only been partially compliant in a couple of cases. Uh, we're we're using that money to 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 gain full compliance in in uh, in all of our access uh, in the in the aspects of access for the pools. Um, we are we're getting some some uh, uh, water stairs. We're putting in some some uh, aquatic stairs for access, so you don't have to use the lift. So we're, we're providing more access and updating the the uh, the possibilities that everybody can go in and use the the space comfortably. Um, and and lastly, we also are looking at a not lastly, but but especially, we also have a equipment lending library. We're building up a warehouse um, uh, for. Andy McDougall's here. Uh, Andy, Andy had, and 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 Emerson Cross have always been really good for uh, basically setting up a lending library for people. Lacrosse is one of those things we want to try and build as many people, get as many people in the funnel as we can, teach them the sport, teach them to love the sport. Inside of Amherst Sports, we look, we want to try and build libraries like that for many of our sports, especially those like lacrosse where kids may need to invest some to get started. You know, everybody does, if, if I have to make a decision, do I want to try it out and invest in all of that to just put my foot in the door? Then that's a hard thing to get people to commit to do. But if you have a warehouse of, of like Amherst Lacrosse or Amherst Football has typically done that for us where they've had loaner equipment or loaner pads or things that people can use until they decide they want to use their own. Um, to build a library there that we can then uh, supplement what we get from from lacrosse or football and and supply for those other sports which might be looking for the same things. We're looking to build libraries, to build a loaner library and a structure to, to be able to introduce more people without them having to feel like I need to already have this. We talked about doing some of it eventually with we don't have a hockey program here, but to be able to to be able to put together like a, a loaning library for something like hockey, where people may also be interested in going out and participating in sports. We that's not part of this phase of it, but we're looking to try and find ways to reduce the cost that pe that might obstruct people from making those first steps to being introduced into the sports that we want them to to get into. So Jose really took took that on in in our sports in our in our sports programming he took that on to try and build a bunch of 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 uh build an inventory of loaner equipment and loaner items the pools to try and get basically subsidize some of the some of the uh, continuing continuing on with some of the sensory stuff we're talking about to build a a, a, a library of of uh of materials that people could use, uh, nobody's gonna, uh, nobody's going to borrow a pair of nose plugs or earplugs or whatever. But we're trying to basically introducing uh, heavily subsidized. We can basically give those out and subsidize those those uh, 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 sensory aware uh, accommodations for people. And so we're transforming the way, using this money to try and transform the way that we are are trying to get people in the door and then also build access, build equity and access once they're in to try and keep them in with us. And so so uh, this is a, uh, Becky is a, for, is a force for us and she sort of speared this whole process to, uh, It'd be one thing if we were looking at one thing with one price tag, but but in terms of comparative shopping and building up a, a an entire inventory and then submitting that to our 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 uh, uh, grant advisors, that's uh, she's she has definitely built uh, you know some value into our 
mentor a $200,000 grant that she already was building value into with the uh, morning movement. All right. Maybe just pause you for a sec. I see Matt's hand up. Yes. Uh, Matt, do you want to jump in here? So I, I guess it sounds like you've found enough projects to spend all the money. That is, <laughs> that, I think that is the nutshell. Yes, we found a bunch of projects okay. there. I think so the next then, time... then I have my comment is sort of from listening to a lot of the things you said. I, I, it sort of reminds me of the whole discussion in the town about a youth center. Um, it seems to be a sort of a similar similar goal as what the youth center goal was. But maybe maybe we can think of the youth center not so much as specifically a physical space, but um, we can have some kind of other umbrella under which we can put this youth center concept um, so that, you know, people can find it. Because if they, all these things are in all different places, then people are not going to be able to find them very easily. But if we can somehow create this sort of concept that everything sits underneath, and um, then people will find out about it and be able to use all of the different parts of it. Um, now, having it go through the schools, that's always helpful because, you know, a lot of people go to the schools. But that's sort of my comment. Here's why I appreciate that comment, because saying that to look at looking at the youth center, the youth empowerment center as an idea and not being being confined to it as a space and a building and breaking ground is my last that was my last major participation in that conversation when we first introduced it that was that's where we were i know there are people in the town that need to hear uh, that are in that same space and saying that we need to think of this right now because of the logistics of building a community center and building the structure and the physical structure and the and the uh, uh you know and and just the systems that it would take to make that work we have we have the ability to look at some of this. I've committed myself while we're in the process, while the town is in the process of figuring out what they want to do with that youth center, with that youth empowerment center. I have from from the beginning of that process committed myself to looking at some of the things that I think a youth empowerment center does, trying to make sure that the idea of the youth empowerment center is in place in what we do here. Becky was Becky, we hired Becky for a lot of reasons, but Becky shares that vision. And when she takes that, that this uh, when she takes this mission of spending that money, she's spending that money in youth empowerment. She's spending that money in in our version of youth empowerment. And so we're trying to find ways to do what, you know, in the meantime, we're trying to find ways to do what we what we want to be doing inside of that youth empowerment center. So so in, in your mind, is is this really inside of recreation, this youth empowerment concept? I uh I don't think it's inside of recreation. I think it's recreation adjacent. Um, the vision for it, like if I said it's inside of recreation, then that would that would. Uh, I think that's. I guess bigger... what I'm saying is what I'm saying is, um, you know, the nice thing about a physical space is everyone can say that's where it is. If if it's if 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 it's not a physical space, it still has to have, like, some kind of center, mm -hmm. you know, some kind of place. That, so, that, that is the center of it. Uh, without wanting to get overly bogged down and going back into that conversation, I will tell you that the uh, uh, the, the the youth empowerment center places a lot of things at its at its focus. Recreation is a major part of it. Recreational interests are a major part of it. We aren't. What you didn't hear me saying in this are things like like career counseling. You didn't hear me saying things like like uh, 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 career counseling about about college prep. You didn't hear me doing things that are co-curricular that way. You didn't you didn't hear me say say things that are also at that center. And so there are things that go outside of recreation. I was pulled into that process. Uh, I was pulled into the youth empowerment process because so much of it feels and looks recreation adjacent, but but it's not all underneath recreation. There's stuff that's, that that I think we could pull into our sphere, but I I do think that a lot of it we can contribute to. Yeah, I'm, I, 
Yeah, probably the schools has some part of it. Cress might be involved in some part of it, you know. But if if you wanted to actually coalesce, there has to be some kind of force to, you know, some kind of energy to make it. it so, so this grant, saying? this grant itself was not youth empowerment. We, had, matter of fact, right. it, one of two major grants we had. But there there's was, a separate. There was a separate yeah, grant a separate for the youth empowerment center. Dollar grant for the youth empowerment center, which is now. It, it's in some version of of a pause and a wait uh, uh, that was taken off of my plate at some point because it got more complicated, partially because of what you just introduced there, because some of it doesn't fall underneath us. Some of it is outside of us. And I think there was some sense that that this was not the appropriate place for it right or wrong that this was not the appropriate place for it to be determined and so so the town has been trying to figure out how to start that we have been trying to figure out how to reintroduce that and to make that make that grant worth something in the meantime my in the meantime in the meantime this two hundred thousand dollar grant this other grant that was put in place a, a, a fraternal grant a, a, a grant that came at the same time from some of the same pushes at this uh, the same energy was to say we want to try and build equity to protect our kids to advance our kids to move our kids forward and we want to try and use this slightly smaller grant but a substantial amount of money to try and to try and give recreation an opportunity to do that that was that that is our intention to try and uphold those same interests and to do it within our recreation department in the way that feels the most appropriate for us to do. I would love to, I, I would love to be just in charge of the whole thing and for everybody to just say yes for everything that I suggested. I would love for that to be, to, to be uh, I think I need one and the other and not or the other. I would love to be in charge of that whole process. And I'd love to have everybody say, we're just gonna follow you and take whatever it is that you wanna do with that. but. They're, well, I mean, okay. there's there's other there's other recreation activities that dovetail with other parts of the town. I mean, obviously, you guys run the after school program, which is in the schools. You know, that's a, that's one like really clear example. Um, but so so, I hear you. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> You're absolutely correct, and and that. So what I'm saying is just because it's not entirely within recreation doesn't mean it can't be centered in recreation. I agree with you. Okay. My my public and on the record comment is I agree with you. Okay. Um, so there's $500,000 sitting out there waiting to be someone to come up with a plan for. heard and noted when when you mentioned the funds expire when do they expire end of the calendar year that's for the 130 that's remaining yes that also, and that does that also impact the empowerment center the actual center no this is separate from the youth empowerment center the five hundred thousand dollars for the youth empowerment center i believe probably is the same time but i can certainly get back to you uh, i can make a note for myself to give you an update on that i think that's a really really reasonable uh, uh, uh follow-up for me to give you all is what we're doing with the five hundred thousand dollars that was originally put in in my purview and then taken out of that purview and, and was removed from my purview i can certainly give you some follow-up on that yeah, that'd be great all right and you mentioned so the 130 won't be a problem to have that spent by the end of the year based on correct this laundry list of eight or nine things you want i am at the office right now and i'm sure if you wait five minutes there's going to be somebody knock at the door and just drop off another box we're spinning <laughs> something already all right all right any other uh questions or comments for ray on arpa Okay, then old old business, new business. Um, Ray, anything on your side? Um, uh, just as a, I, I guess as an update, you guys have heard way too much from me. I'm gonna, I'm never gonna come without staff again. Um, um, we have started the process of planning for summer camp. Uh, Chris has helped us out by getting our our CITs, connecting Becky with, with former CITs and the CIT program along with our staffing has, has 
uh, has basically taken off now. We're we're in go time with with camp. Uh, uh, our our budget, which I told you was going to de determine what we what I say about the the Cherry Hill uh, project. Uh, we got postponed a week last week, so we have our budget hearing tomorrow. I'm going to go home and get some get a good night's sleep here. Uh, oh, that got postponed until tomorrow, so I can give you a follow up on where we are for our next meeting. I think that I will be asking the chairs to put Cherry Hill or or some update on Cherry Hill on that agenda for us. Sounds good. All right, then um, report of the chairs. Um, Gene, anything from you? Um, no, do we have any update, Ray? Like if we can do an in-person meeting yes. yet? Hybrid. Sorry, I, I meant to share that with you directly because I know you've asked me about it. Um, the answer is hybrid is almost impossible. Okay. Not impossible. Hybrid is discouraged uh, because of the amount of, uh, it's heavily discouraged because of the amount of IT coordination that would have to go into it okay. because of, because they're, they're encouraging all departments to choose to be in person or, or uh, online. Um, uh, I can certainly, it's your commission, I can certainly ask you all if you want to revisit your own conversation about doing it in person. We talked, uh, I think at the end of last spring, I think we we talked going into the summer about, about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of both sides, uh, uh, but hybrid would be very difficult to pull off. Okay, maybe we could add that to the agenda for next time to discuss it jonas's hand is that um was the question gene that we do this meeting regularly um in person or was it this let we get together once in a while in person no to like have our regular meetings hybrid regular meeting. right or in person or via zoom or you know but, but right. if hybrid was an option we wanted to see first before right. we were able to discuss it <laughs> understand thanks yeah we can we can Go around the horn next go round and just kind of I think Jonas to your point, you know, plan B we want to do it in person. It's just maybe it's it's a periodic thing once a quarter or once every six months or something like that. But it would be nice to get some in person time with folks on the commission, the committee. All right. Um and nothing for me. Report of staff. Ray, anything else to add? That's all. All right. Well, um, again, thanks everybody for your flexibility. We've got, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have an April meeting. I think we've got April 8th written on the agenda. I, I still need to look through my own calendar to confirm I can make that. So we'll, you know, we will send out a official date with some more notice um, once we nail that down. But um, thanks all for the time and enjoy the rest of your evening. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everyone. See you.